The next table, hold down displacement, is accessed by go to table, wind or seismic, flexible or rigid diaphragm, and then hold down displacement. Again here, the table for the hold down displacement is the same for both wind and seismic. In the first column, the hold downs are classified by levels with the same code as for the displacement table while having the direction of the force indicated beside its name. The second column describes the type of hold down used. The third column describes the uplift force which represents the accumulated hold down tension force from overturning, dead, and wind uplift, or for seismic, the vertical earthquake component. This value is the strength level and is not factored. Let's compare the uplift force in the hold down displacement table for flexible wind analysis to the one in the hold down design table analysis. The difference is explained by the fact that the strength level force is used for deflection analysis while for the hold down design the factored force is used. The factor is the 0.6 used in the allowable stress design load combination. Similarly, let's compare the uplift force in the hold down displacement table for seismic flexible analysis to the one in the hold down design result table. The difference between both is explained by multiplying the uplift force from the hold down displacement by 0.7, which is the factor used for the allowable stress design load combinations. Back to the hold down displacement table for wind flexible diaphragm design. The fourth column represents the displacement of the assembly when elongation and slippage are combined. Thus, dashes and not values would be present in the slippage column. More and more are manufacturers doing tests on their hold down products to provide the elongation and slippage as one value, therefore this value should be kept, but if the slippage values are wanted, the following has to be done. Choose hold down from the data bar, and from there, uncheck the elongation, tensile capacity, and slippage wood capacity combined as single hold down displacement capacity for the hold down used in the design. Exit and rerun the design. Now there are values in the slippage column. When there are slippage values in the fifth column, the fourth column represents the elongation only. Still in the fourth column, the following term stands for the elongation or displacement only based on the normal bolt length manufacturer's value. Add is for the longer anchor bolt length for elongation only or displacement. And DA is the vertical displacement due to the following two terms. The fifth column represents the vertical displacement of hold down fasteners attached to the studs when not combined with elongation. Next is the wood shrinkage, which is obtained by the following formula. The service conditions can be found in the legend and can be edited in the design tab of the settings. The length subjected to shrinkage is found in the story information via the go to table, structural data, and story information. Refer to tutorial 5.2 structural data and loads for more information. Going back to the hold down displacement table, the seventh column is the displacement due to the wood crushing at the compression end of the wall segment plus the extra displacement due to miscuts, gaps, and others. This can be edited in the hold down tab in the design settings. The total vertical displacement is DA and is the sum of all displacements. Finally, the last column 
represents the hold down horizontal deflection, which is the fourth term in the four term deflection equation. Although designing for the lateral resistance of the structure, it is important to verify that the sheathing material and fastening of the sheathing to studs does not fail in pressures perpendicular to the wall. The program verifies the component and cladding section load case as it represents the worst case scenario and affects both the sheathing strength and bending and nail withdrawal. The table is accessed by go to table, wind design, and components and cladding by shear line. The wind section load is defined by two zones, inner and end zone. The end zone is defined as a four feet wide perimeter strip at every corner on each face where component and cladding wind is at its maximum and the inner strip is the rest of the wall surface. The end zone section pressure values are used to determine the stud spacing, sheathing thickness, nail size, edge nail spacing for the whole wall, and field nail spacing within the end zone. The inner zone pressure value is used only to determine the field nail spacing outside the end zone. The external pressure coefficients, GCP, are determined from this figure and added to the internal pressure of the following figure. The speed width values already includes a wind load duration factor of 1.6, which is already hard coded in the program. The capacity of the sheathing and out of plane bending is tabulated in the following speed width table. And in order to use for the allowable stress design method, these values need to be divided by 1.6 according to the following clause, compared to a value of 2 as per the following speed width clause for in plane capacity tabulated in this table. The out-of-plane sheathing assumption used by default by shear walls is a two-span stud support condition and it can be changed in the design tab of the settings to a three-span stud support condition. The reason for the default being two-span stud support condition is that its capacity is lower than the three-span stud support condition, thus more conservative. And this support condition frequently exists at the building end zones where the largest wind forces occur. Therefore, if the three span stud support condition is used, the values used by the program will be multiplied by a factor of 1.25. You can see the span assumption used in the analysis in the legend below the components and cladding by shear line table. The nail withdrawal capacity determined by the program is in accordance with the following equation with the modification factors from the following table. The equation is a function of the load duration factor CD, the wet service factor CM, the temperature factor CT, the specific gravity of the nail G, the nail shank diameter, and the penetration P. If the nail withdrawal capacity is exceeded, a red warning will be written at the bottom of the legend and not in the table. Thus, it is important to verify the legend. Now, back to the table. It is divided into the different direction shear lines while presenting the sheathing force to capacity ratio, as well as the fastener withdrawal force to capacity ratio for the field and edge spacing. These three force to capacity ratio need not to be greater than one or else the sheathing or fasteners will fail. The forces applied and service conditions are also presented. For more details, refer to the legend below the table. This concludes this tutorial on the explanation of hold down design, drag strut forces, deflection, hold down displacement, and width section design results tables. The next and last tutorial of this series will explain the seismic information and story drift results tables.